We talked in the last lesson, we introduced this concept of a rate. Remember that a rate is uh, something that has different units. We're making a comparison between two quantities that have different units. One of the things we're going to talk about now is how do we take those rates and uh, say convert them from one form to another. In other words, like for an example, how would I take miles and convert them to inches? Now, you've done this before, um, like you've taken how many, how many feet are in a mile, uh, so how many feet would be uh, three miles. Um, but we're going to look at a little bit more organized way to do it. And actually, the, the method we're going to use is something you're going to use a lot in chemistry. If any of you have uh, siblings who are sophomores, you can show them their notes when you're done and uh, see if they recommend, recognize this. It's something called stoichiometry. Um, what we're going to use here, rather than just, like, say I have three miles, rather than just multiplying by 5280, um, we're going to use something called conversion factors. It's going to seem a little bit uh, abstract and unnecessary, but just stick with me here, and, and, and uh, you'll see how it does make this a little bit easier, especially when we're talking about converting a rate when you have two different units going on rather than just one. And that really takes a lot of the thinking out. So we're going to multiply by th these things we call conversion factors, which basically are rates where the top equals the bottom. Why is that important? Well, when I multiply by something where the top equals the bottom, essentially what it means is that I'm multiplying by 1. Take 1 foot to 12 inches, for example. Well, one foot is 12 inches, right? The top equals the bottom. So if I were to multiply, like say I had uh, 36 inches and I multiplied by this, this would convert it to feet without actually changing the ratio. A couple of hints is how we want to use this. I highlighted a couple of things here for you. The main thing you want for your conversion factor when you're picking it, you want to introduce the topic that you want. So like say if I were converting, in the next example, we're going to convert uh, my uh, feet to miles. So I would want to make sure that my new conversion factor had miles in it. But I also want to cancel out uh, the thing that I started with. So we're going to cancel out, in the next example, we're going to cancel out feet and bring the miles in. So let's take a look at this here. I've got uh, 467 feet converted into miles. Now we could just do 467 divided by 5280, but let me use this to kind of introduce this concept of a conversion factor. So we've got 467 feet. I'm going to write that as a ratio by just making that 467 feet over 1. And I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. Now the conversion factor here, remember, I've got to get rid of what I started with. How do I do that? Well, this goes back to how we can simplify fractions when we multiply. Remember that, uh, notice I put feet in the denominator here. As an example, remember when, uh, when you multiply fractions, let's say, for instance, we were doing 2 thirds times, um, let's think here, times 5 halves, okay? Notice here, I can cross out the two twos. Same thing with the feet. If I got feet on top and feet on bottom, I can cross that out. I can cross them out because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I've crossed out the feet. I've gotten rid of the old units. Now I want to bring in the units I want. So again, whatever I want to get rid of, if it's in the top, I put it in the bottom. If it's in the bottom, I put it in the top. More on that when we do some examples. I want to bring in miles, so I, I've created a, a, a gap by, uh, by getting rid of the feet. So in that gap, I'm going to put the miles. All right, next. Uh, next, I need to figure out what numbers go in here. Notice here, I, I haven't done any numbers yet. I've simply canceled out the, unit, the old units and brought the new units in. Uh, this is very. This is all part of setting up the conversion factor. Again, it seems like it's it's a, a lot for for little payoff, but you're going to see when we get to the, the next example, next couple examples, it does make this a lot more organized and does take a lot of the thinking out. You just have to get used to it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, one of one. Of, this is going to be a unit rate. Um, so I need to figure out: does the one go in the top or go in the bottom? Well, I don't know how many miles one foot is. But I do know how many feet are in one mile. So usually what you do here is you figure out what's the bigger item. One mile is bigger than one foot. So I'm going to put the one with the mile, and one mile is 5,280 feet. And now I'm just multiplying fractions. I do 467 times 1, and that's 467. And notice that's miles because I have those are the only labels that are not crossed out in the numerator. 
And then the denominator, I have 1 times 5280, which is 5280. And I have no labels there, so I just have no units. Now, I'm going to make this, I'm going to turn this from a rate into a unit rate. To do that, remember, we just divide the top by the bottom. This is the same thing we did in the last lesson. And I get, I'm going to round that to 0 0.09 miles. So, 467 feet or 0 0.09 miles. That's how we set up these conversion factors. We probably wouldn't use them for the problem this simple. Let's go ahead and look at another example here. Here I've got 55 miles per hour, and I want to figure out how many feet per minute is that. I'm going to start by writing my starting ratio. My starting ratio is 55 miles in one hour. That's my rate. Now I want to get rid of the miles and turn them into feet. I want to get rid of the hours and turn them into minutes. So I'm going to get rid of them. It doesn't matter what I get rid of first, but miles is in the numerator. I put miles in the denominator to get rid of it. I don't want to put hours up here because if I put hours up there, I'm saying that hours are equal to miles, and that's not the case. I'm going to cross out the miles and replace it with the thing that I want to replace it with. I want to replace miles with feet. I need another conversion factor to get rid of hours. So I need to make two changes, miles to feet and hours to minutes. So I need two conversion factors. So notice hours was in the denominator, so I put hours in the numerator. That crosses that out, and I can replace it with minutes. Now I'm ready to fill in the numbers. One mile is 5,280 feet. And then I have uh, hours and minutes. One hour is longer than uh, one minute, so I have one hour is 60 minutes. And now notice I have feet in the numerator. I have minutes in the denominator. Those are the labels I want, so I'm ready to multiply. I don't multiply until I have everything set up. I'm going to do 55 times 5,280 first. Notice here, I don't have to decide whether to divide or multiply by these numbers because the way they're set up by doing the conversion factors takes care of that thinking for me. All I have to do is figure out what units do I cancel out. Where do I put these? I've got to make sure I set up the conversion factors right. Once I do that, I'm golden. Now, this is how many feet you're going in 60 minutes. Not very useful, but I want to know how many feet I'm going in one minute. So I'm going to turn this into a unit rate by dividing top and bottom by 60. So I have one, f one minute in the denominator, and now I'm going to do 290,400 divided by 60, and I get 4,840. So when you're going 55 miles per hour, you're traveling 4,840 feet in one minute. Pretty fast. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples, get a little bit more practical here. Uh, for this example here, it says that uh, the average American uses 580 pounds of paper per year. First step is always identify what rate are they giving me. The rate they're giving me is 580 pounds per year, and notice what they want me to change that to. They want me to change that to pounds per month. So I'm going to start by writing down my beginning ratio, 580 pounds over one year. The symbol for pounds is LBS. Go ahead and write that here, over one year. Now I want to change that to pounds per month. Go ahead and highlight that. So really, think about how many changes we need to make here. I don't need to make any changes in the numerator, because I have pounds and I'm going to leave it as pounds. I don't need to make any change. I need to make one change in the denominator, right? I need to change years to months. So if I only need to make one change, I only need one conversion factor. And that's one that will get rid of years and bring in the months. So to get rid of years, I got to put it in the numerator because I start with it in the denominator. And then I have a hole here left in the denominator so I can fill that with what I want, which is months. Now I have pounds per month, so now I'm ready to put the numbers in. One year is 12 months. Notice no numbers are put in there until I get the labels the way I want. I don't multiply until I've got everything set up the right way. 580 times 1 is 580. 1 times 12 is 12. So I, the average American uses 580 pounds in 12 months, which would be actually kind of logical. So in one month, I'm going to do 580 divided by 12. And I get 48.3 pounds in one month. Now, let's take that one more step. 
Uh, how many pounds would this be in five months? Well, this is how many pounds in one month. So mathematically, I would just need to take this rate and multiply it by five months. So I'm going to go ahead and take this rate and write it down here, and then it's the next part. You go ahead and do the same in your note sheet. 48.3 pounds, one month. And I'm going to multiply by five months. Notice I have months in the bottom, months in the top. So months can cancel. I'm going to put that, uh, that five months over one just so we keep that as a rate. And now I don't have any labels in the bottom, so I just have uh, one times one in the bottom. So I'm going to do 48.3 times five. And I get, let's see here, 241.7 pounds of paper in five months. All right. It's a fairly easy example. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in the next example, we've got a car traveling 60 miles in two hours. If you think about it, that's only 30 miles in one hour. But we're going to go ahead and write 60 miles in two hours. That's our starting rate. Notice it is not a unit rate, but that's okay. We can still work with this. Now think about what I want to change this to. It says to change this to feet per second. So 60 miles in two hours. I'm going to change that to feet per second. What I'm going to do, because this gets a little involved, I'm going to write a reminder off on the right side here that this is what I'm going to. Let's look at how many conversion factors we need. I need at least one for the top to take my feet or miles to feet. And then I need to take hours to seconds. So I'm going to need at least two. I can't cancel out miles and hours in the same one. I need one conversion factor to take care of the distance. So I'm going to do that here, cancel out miles. But I want to replace miles with distance. I'm going to replace distance with distance. You can't put time with the distance. So there's my conversion factor for the distance, which is the feet. Use a different color here. Next, I can deal with the time. I'm going to cancel out the hours by putting it in the top because it's in the bottom. Now, if you don't know how many seconds are in an hour, don't worry. Because we do know how many minutes are in an hour. You say, well, that's not what we want. We don't, we don't want minute, uh, feet per minute. Well, that's okay, because all we need is one more conversion factor. Go ahead and put minutes in the top, because if we don't want that, you're right. But then we can replace that with seconds. <clears throat> so now notice I have feet is the only thing not crossed out on top. Seconds is the only thing not crossed out on bottom. I'm ready to fill in the numbers finally. Uh, so we remember the, the bigger quantity gets the one, and then you just fill in the, the regular conversions there. All right, now I'm ready to multiply fractions. I'll multiply the tops. 60 times 50, 280 times 1 times 1 gives me 316,800. And on the bottom, I have 2 times 1 times 60 times 60. And that's going to give me 7,200 seconds. So that's how many feet I go in 7,200 seconds. Not very useful. But if I change this rate to a unit rate, it is very helpful. You notice how much I'm using the vocabulary here, here guys. Make sure, you, uh, make sure you learn this stuff. Learn the, the correct terminology because it is going to uh, come into play later. And it's coming into play right now. So this end, ends up being 44 feet in one second. Divide, I'm dividing top and bottom by 7,200. Basically, I'm simplifying this fraction. So 44 feet in one second, let's see how far we travel in 45 seconds. Again, this is just a car going 30 miles in one hour, so not that fast by car standards. I'm just going to take 45 feet, 44 feet in one second and multiply by 45 seconds, same as the last time. One time, notice the seconds cancel. One times one is the denominator, so I don't even need a denominator. 44 times 5 is 1,980 seconds. I'm sorry, feet. Seconds have canceled. Okay, one more. All right, on this one. We've got, this one is kind of hard to identify. We've got a lamp. Every, every time it flashes, it's, it's uh, one one hundredth of a second. Now what the camera sees is that this object moved 52 centimeters between flashes. So in one one hundredth of a second, it moved 52 centimeters. That's my rate. The distance it traveled was 52 centimeters. 
And I'm going to write, instead of 1 100th, I'm going to write 0 0.01 centimeters, because that's 1 100th of a second. Okay, I want to change this to meters per second. Now look how many, how many conversion factors we're going to need. I need to change centimeters to meters, so I'll need one for that. But seconds to seconds, it's already there. So I only need one conversion factor. Now you are going to need to know your metrics. Uh, I'm going to cancel out centimeters and replace it with meters. Uh, one meter is 100 centimeters. Notice I've got the labels I want. Centi thinks centipede, century, century is 100 years, so 1 meter, 100 centimeters, and now I'm ready to multiply. Watch what happens here. 52 times 1, I go 52 meters, and then 0 0.01 times 100 is 1. So I go 52 meters in 1 second. Now, we do have quite a few uh, opportunities for you to practice this, so quite a few problems for you to do here. Uh, my recommendation is that you do the first four and check them with me. That way we can work through them together. If you got them wrong, uh, we don't, you don't have to scrap the whole thing. So just do the first four, make sure you got those right, and then you can use those to help you on the, the next. It's going to take some practice here to get this very tough concept. Let me know if you have any questions.